Be honest, when were you the dating horror story? Dot. Oh my gosh, this is so embarrassing. I had recently broken up with a guy who I was convinced was my true love. An acquaintance asked me out to dinner and I reluctantly accepted although I wasn't interested. This poor guy picked me up and was so nice and kind as I spent the entire evening talking about my ex and how much I loved and missed him. I couldn't stop. He dropped me off at home and gently said he hoped found happiness. I looked him up a few years ago and he's happily married with three kiddos so I don't think I broke his heart. Dot. I went to a house party at New Year's with a cute girl I just met and right after the ball dropped we started making out pretty hard. After about 15 minutes I started to feel fairly sour so we decided to head back to her place. Turns out I had come down with the full-blown stomach flu which ended up being intensified by the heavy drinking from the earlier festivities. I had to try to convince this. Girl I didn't know that this wasn't from the booze and that something bad was happening to me. I was so sick the next day that I couldn't leave her place AAS venturing farther than 20 feet from a toilet was not going to happen. My fever was so high that I was hallucinating and got lost on my way to the toilet in a straight hallway then proceeded to faint in her arms when she found me confused. Staring at a wall. I shit and puked in her house for a full 24 hours before I could muster up the energy and courage to take the 15 minutes voyage home to my sanctuary of safety and acceptance. Oh and she lived at her mom's house. So that's the story of how I first met my mother-in-law. She's a very understanding woman. I was obsessed with the Blair Witch Project and kept offering trips to the woods with me for fun. Didn't realize I looked like a serial killer until weeks later. Haha, <laughs> background, I was born without a sense of small. One day, I finally got up the nerve to ask this girl at workout to lunch. It was a hot day, I walked her out to my car, opened and closed the door for her and started around to the driver's side when she jumped out of the car and ran inside without saying a word. I couldn't find out what happened. She refused to talk to me. So days later I asked one of the other girls and finally they said, something in you car smells bad. I looked around and found the half carton of unfinished lunch milk that had spilled on the floor in the back seat a few days prior. Story of my senseless life. Pretty certain one guy thinks I stalked him. I read a situation wrong and went in to snuggle with him. We were in his bedroom so, and it just felt weird. I was upset so went quiet and headed home. I never heard back from him, he totally ghosted me. I saw him once on the metro station and he hid behind a sign, also saw his friends at a club we all went to, next thing I know he's making blog. Updates talking about a crazy stalker who was too into him. I was on a first and only date with a dude. I was nervous, so L overshared some crazy shit about my family's history. Then, during dinner I could not stop spitting fucking food everywhere. It was truly a one-off thing because I haven't done it since. Like, was overly cautious and somehow, during dinner, it kept happening. Humiliating. He unmatched me immediately, which I completely understood. Legit one of the worst dates I've ever been on, and I can only blame myself. The good news is, I met my husband a month later, I told him about that date, and he thought it was hilarious. On many occasions I've walked out abruptly if I was upset about something. I was walked out on once and we parted in anger another time. It's the realization that I was these people's dating horror stories that promoted this question. That maybe they are still telling the story of this awful guy they went on a terrible date with. No one thinks of themselves that way, as the villain in a story. I did not realize that a friend in college thought she was dating me for months. We'd hang out, occasionally grab coffee or go to concerts, loaf at each other's apartments, share food. Pretty standard goodbye hugs, the occasional nap on the other person. Nothing romantic, never even talked about it as if we were dating, no formal acknowledgement. Then one day she saw an open box of condoms in my room and got really upset and ghosted me for a week. After that it occurred to me that she may have had different intentions when she invited me over when her parents weren't home in high school. In college she had literally invited me to her apartment to cook dinner and asked me to get in bed with her. Maybe she wasn't taking her pants off in front of me on a regular basis because she found the sensation annoying. But I never knew. I was just having a good time walking with her and her dogs or sucking down a chai tea latte or listening to music. In my early 20s I was emotionally unstable, extremely insecure, abusing Adderall, and struggling with an eating disorder. I'm talking crying uncontrollably, cutting, 
unable to go to events or be particularly sociable, clingy to people I want to date, requiring validation and company constantly while simultaneously wanting to be alone, just really struggling mentally and physically. Looking back, I can see why those traits might have been a turn-off, duh. Took many years of therapy and personal growth to turn things around. I was very nervous and excited for this date and I was definitely the horror. It was my first date after a long relationship, and I just ended up being super awkward. He asked about family and I blathered on and asked about his. And I could feel the expression on my face looking off, like Jay just super intense. But it was Ike was watching a movie and couldn't chill out. So he opened the door for me and I take his hand, thinking he was offering it. He wasn't. So he has this rambling about horror movies, intense as fuck girl, getting too close and holding his hand. It was our first and last date Andy don't blame him at all. Poor guy. I was having a manic episode during the date so it became a lot of me cutting off her mid-conversation, verbal diarrhea, having really intense eye contact and probably asked a weird slash cringy question or two. Hope she found someone nice. As a teenager I was insanely clingy. Finally got a date with this girl. She felt sorry for me since I had been in a car accident. I had my jaw wired shut and our date was the first time I could eat normal. I got all you could eat fajitas and stuffed myself. She was a vegetarian. Sigh. I joined them for board game night. I have ADHD so instead of focusing on the game, I was stacking up the little pieces. Well, one of the structures I ended up making looked like a swastika, and two of her friends were German and got offended at it. The sad part was I had this stupid grin on my face while stacking them because I felt like I'd solved some geometric puzzle thing. When I really liked two different guys, but one was unavailable so I went with the other. When the unavailable one became available, I started seeing him very openly. I fought with the first one I was seeing over text and eventually dumped him that way too. A couple weeks later a girl I wasn't even friends with asked if she could date the one I dumped. They're married now. Karma though, the second. Guy was just using me to get with someone else, who he also married later. This was decades ago before we knew what ghosting was. I went out on a couple of dates with a guy and thought things were going okay. We talked a lot. But then I called one day and my call went straight to voicemail. So, I kept calling. I was stupid and I admit this now. But I honestly just thought he was on the other line. This was way before smartphones and texting. Then I actually heard this voicemail when it said my name stop calling please if he had just told me he wasn't interested i never would have even tried to call him i was completely gobsmacked after that i made a hard rule of only calling once and leaving one message if the guy didn't call back then that was it and yes as soon as i heard his message i stopped calling and blocked his number too oh you know when for three years after a breakup you still reach out once or twice a month that was me rip my soul. I found a hamster abandoned in my apartment building. I felt bad for it. Gave it a cage. Let it run free some Tims. Had a dude over and we were on the floor just regular style making out. Nothing bananas or weird. But the hamster. It was out. I forgot. It climbed up on his back. And suddenly I was that absolutely batshit chick who has fucking hamsters running amok. I didn't bother explaining. Never saw him again. I was laughing about some sort of concept that I thought was absolutely absurd something I thought was some new social justice fad. She was clearly not impressed and ghosted me. Took some sociology and learned that what LD been laughing about was a real thing and actually did cause damage. Fuck. Add to that all sorts of messages throughout my teens and twenties that I thought were cheeky, flirty, suggestive, and charming which I now realize probably just came off as creepy or pervy. Ugh. I didn't realize it was a date and brought my kid. L agreed to a date way too soon after a fairly sudden and traumatic breakup. I'm not sure if I even realized it was intended to be a date at the time, but looking back it definitely was. I didn't have much else on my mind or going on in my life at the time, so the entire two-hour car ride to a nice restaurant in the nearest city and back was either talking about my ex, crying, or complete silence. I'm not in contact with him anymore. Turns out it never would have worked out due to massive political differences, but I still feel bad because I can only imagine how pathetic and obnoxious I must have been. For pretty much my entire twenties, I was a creep, 
and even scared one girl away from the local blues dancing scene. Not on purpose, I just had a profound lack of self-awareness when assessing my own actions. I couldn't recognize what was creepy and what crossed the line. Here's the thing. In my late teens, I had gone through a horrible, terrible, traumatic event that tore my family apart. Combine. That with some moderately severe, and untreated mental illness, I hit two or three crook boxes for the Colorado Disability Checklist, but I'm still moderately functional, and a potential spectrum diagnosis, I was struggling with a lot. Unfortunately, this left me with a huge victim complex. In my own mind, my actions were beyond reproach. After all, I was the victim in my life's tragedy, why? Should I even bother looking at my own actions? It took a lot of self-reflection before I realized I was a creep. Until I was over 30, for a long time I was angry at the world because of my loneliness. I didn't realize I was the one hurting people, and driving women away from me. I was too smart to fall for the incel shit but I thought I was the victim when it came to dating, not the horror story. I'm currently in therapy, taking meds, holding down a steady job, but I'm staying far away from the dating world for the foreseeable future. I have a long way to go before I'm even ready for a simple dinner date, let alone anything beyond that. Sorry. I started writing, and, well, I guess I needed to get this off my chest. Asked a cute barista out from Starbucks. Turned out she was super Christian. Said she couldn't meet up over the weekend because her church was building birdhouses for blind children. I asked her why a blind kid would want a birdhouse. She got miffed and said they like to listen to the birds. I suggested she just give them a CD of bird noises, this is back when we had CDs. Second date didn't. Happen. Was seeing this girl, I think she thought we were more serious than I thought we were. One day I was walking out of a building on campus, with another female friend of mine and talking to her. This girl I had been seeing walked past us and said hi, but I didn't notice her until the last minute, so it was a quick oh hi and kept going. Didn't realize till later how bad that looked. About a week. Later I told the girl we should probably see other people and I wasn't feeling a relationship, and she got really salty and sarcastic about it, and how it totally makes sense that you shouldn't stick with something you're not totally interested in. I dated via phone a girl, we got along well enough that we decided to meet at a mall for our first in person. She brought a friend with her just in case, which I totally understand, meeting someone in person for the first time. One thing I remember she said she liked country music. BTW, this was circa 1995. I was cool with that, not my favorite, but it's alright, and an ex was really into it. So Elle figured I knew a lot about country to hold a conversation about it. We meet and I noticed her friend's striking red hair, which reminded me of country singer Reba McIntyre. So I decide to show off my country music knowledge and say oh, you look just like Rita McNeil. Pictures linked for reference, the two look nothing alike. And to make matters worse, my date was a plus-sized brunette. But not nearly as plus-sized as Rita McNeil. That probably didn't endear me to her as I remember the date not going well and her not returning my calls after and I'm still embarrassed about it 25 years later and I'm sure she's still probably telling stories about the guy who compared her to Rita McNeil. To my once date, if you're reading this, I've been deeply embarrassed about it for a quarter. Of a century? Just getting similar names mixed up, dot. All of them but I always paid for dinner. Accidentally took a Jewish girl to Ribfest. When they saw my face. Now they're a believer. Maybe not a horror story, but when I first got into the dating scene, I didn't know ghosting etiquette, so I was blowing this poor woman's phone up for over a week until a friend finally gave her peace and explained to me the reality. I had undiagnosed and untreated bipolar disorder and let's just say I was a nightmare to my boyfriend at the time ETA, I'm on meds and in therapy now and doing much better. When my husband and I first met I had just been raped a few weeks prior so I was a huge mess in terms of sex and intimacy for a long time. Luckily for me he stuck through it. Told a flat-chested girl a joke about how men love big boobs. Think I was in until that? I was just generally inconsiderate and selfish. The straw that broke the camel's back was when I asked if she was hungry to which she responded yes. Totally thought she was gone order food for takeout while L cooked only myself some pasta. When I was drinking, I truly don't deserve to have someone as amazing as my wife who stuck with me for years before we got married while I was a walking shit show. 
In middle school I remembered I had a huge crush on the girl who sat in front of me, Emily. Emily and I were actually good friends but only in secret because she was popular and I wasn't. As I got older I became a bit more popular thankfully. However I never saw Emily after middle school and we never got in touch. In high school I would rate future dates on a scale from 1 to Emily. Fast forward. Almost 10 years later. I started talking to a girl on Tinder. We chat constantly and share tons of good laughs. We went out on a date and it was amazing. She was everything I wanted in a woman. We even hooked up afterwards. I asked her out to a second date and an even fancier restaurant. Halfway through yet another amazing date I hear my name called from behind me. I turn around to see my childhood. Crush Emily. Emily gives me a hug and I'm just so blown away to see her it was as if everything else around me didn't even matter. I invited her to my table. We chatted and shared times of the days in middle school. She tells me she's single and was waiting on another guy for her date and that he was running late. I asked her instead to come out on a trip had planned for me and my actual date. She said sure. Emily and I spent the whole time talking to each other and just sharing stories. My date got third wheeled and she completely bailed when she realized I was trying to hook up with Emily. I didn't realize she had left until hours after the time she actually did. And it would have gone longer but Emily pointed out that she wasn't there anymore. I tried calling her but she wouldn't answer. Later that night Emily and I hooked up and during that time she called back. I went to answer the phone but Emily took the phone before I could or so I thought. The phone answered and was tossed to the side. My date heard everything. She left me a very depressing rant in a text and blocked me. Emily and I dated for two weeks after and haven't talked since. I had broken up with my ex once previously and she'd tried to kill herself. I was fairly sure if broke up with her again she'd actually do it and he couldn't live with that. I got increasingly distant until she broke up with me so if she killed herself I would feel less responsible. Not my proudest moment. When I couldn't control my temper and was addicted to heroin. I once dated a friend purely because I was lonely at the time. Had liked me for a few years but just wanted to be friends because I'll enjoyed our friendship and I knew dating would complicate things as I didn't see it going anywhere. But then, I had a couple of months where I was just crazy lonely, living in a new city, and going to a new school. So I told him we could date. It lasted two weeks. And then I found someone I was actually attracted to. I broke up with him immediately and started going out with the new guy right away. That guy didn't last either, but it lasted longer than two weeks. I've not spoke to my old friend since then. I'm not proud of it. But, sometimes we make stupid decisions because we're young and weak in the moment. Dated in high school for the attention. I genuinely did not like the person for who they were. They were completely in love and convinced we were gonna get married someday, and I did nothing to stop that thinking. I dumped them four months later. We still worked together for another six months or so. God I such an asshole. Asked this guy on our second date what's his stance on marriage. In my defense I probably have a slight case of Aspirigers. Anyway before a New Year party freshman year of college I informed everyone that I had figured out that my standards were too high and that I was going to lower them a bit to improve my chances. One L just let that sink in. I think the woman I ended up dating after Nye found out around four days into the resulting relationship. Sorry, dot. I became insanely infatuated with a man I met online and turned absolutely batshit crazy to the point that he threatened to inform the police about me. Looking back on it now is like looking at another person. Apparently the endorphins that romantic attraction releases can make you actually crazy though. I was such a toxic person at times in my late teens to around mid-twenties. I didn't date much, seeing I'm sure I was giving off red flags to the people I met and I don't recall anything specific that exceptionally bad other than being particularly short-fused at the time. Pretty sure there's women I met slash talked to out there telling stories about how they met this guy that seemed like an okay person, but exploded rather randomly on them, even though they didn't know them that well. I'm 33 now, happily married and we have a six-month-old son. Therapy has done me well over the years and I had a huge change of character when I was 25 slash 26-ish. In the end I grew up with a lot of toxic behavior around me. My mom having a pretty dominant personality disorder is one of them. So yeah, never stop trying to better yourself, people. If I could do it, so can you? When I was 18 years old, my bipolar started to manifest really badly. 
I became incredibly paranoid, jealous, etc. Neither of us handled the situation well but dear lord I'm happy I'm medicated now. I was three weeks out of an abusive marriage and, as an absolute mess, was leaning heavily on a good friend of mine. He was eight years younger than me, super hot, a total flirt and a bit of a cock mobster so I had absolutely no idea he was into me. One afternoon, we were hanging out and I was talking about how when I was young, it was a running joke that LD always be into the tallest guy in the room. His response was, semi-joking, why are you dating me? I unfortunately replied but we're not dating. He looked like a kicked puppy. And I fucked myself over because when I got a bit more stable, I realized I was crazy about him but, at that point, it was too late. Damage done. At least he remains a staunch and true friend to this day and found himself a wonderful woman to marry.